Martin Schenkman, you're an attorney and the author of Estate Planning for People with a Chronic Condition or Disability. What makes estate and financial planning different for those with a chronic illness? Everything you do when you have a chronic disease is different than the planning that somebody without that challenge should be doing. Things are different. So, for example, if you're doing financial planning, which everybody needs to do, if you do a budget, many budgets are done based on assumptions that are fed into computer models. Those assumptions may not work for you. You may have additional costs for um, a home health aid. You may have additional costs for a reader to help you read documents for your, your business. There could be a whole raft of things that are different. You may have far more than the average medical costs. So depending on your circumstances, if you're doing a financial projection and a budget, you need to evaluate very clearly how your specific experience of your specific disease and the likely disease course you face will change your planning. If you need to model out that in 10 or 15 or 20 years you need to make your home accessible, that could be a fairly significant cost. And it's no different than planning for a kid's college that every financial planner knows how to do. But if you don't give them that input, they're not going to know how to do it. So from an upbeat perspective, if you have a health challenge and you plan accordingly, you may be fine. But if you don't plan accordingly and you just divert, revert rather to the sort of general assumptions that the average person may use, you know, it's like that average 2.3 kids that that proverbial family has, it just doesn't work. When you do estate planning, and hopefully we'll get into this a little bit more in the other couple of questions, you need to modify the documents that you do so they make sense for your challenges. A generic off-the-plate document just may not do what you need.